So, uh, moving on to our next speaker for the evening, Dr. Swati Popat. She is the founder president of Early Childhood Association India and the Association for Primary Education and Research. As president of Podar Education Network, she leads over 490 preschools and daycares in India and UAE. She heads the teacher training wing at Podar. Swati has coined the term Kiducation for early childhood teachers and parents to help them understand that young children need education from the point of view of their development. She is also an expert on the global think tank of Kidzania. Today she speaks on implementation of NCF with the engine of change leadership. About the national curriculum framework. National curriculum framework for the foundational years. That is the main difference between the NEP of the previous years and this NEP. This NEP A has come out with the new term foundational years, which means it has clubbed three years of early years and two years of primary together and considered them as the foundation of it education. And that is why this NEP brings to us NCFs for every level. This is the first NCF that has been released. It is for the foundational years. And as you can see on the screen now, this is the cover page of the NCF. But if you will see at the top left hand corner, you will see that little design, right? It's called the Mobius symbol. So the Mobius symbol is what makes this entire document, this motif of the Mobius is what actually gives us the message of what this entire document is all about because the Mobius stands for something which is perpetual, ongoing, developing. And that is what this NCF says that we want education to be an ongoing, developing process. It's a never ending process. There is no start and a beginning. It's a development that is ongoing. And that is what we need to keep in mind when we are trying to understand and implement the NCF foundational years. What is foundational years and why Why are we talking about brain development and everything? You know, it's so nice that people nowadays throw that phrase around, uh, the first six years are meant for brain development, etc. But what is it? What is this brain development that we are talking about? If you look at the poster on the right, it says, raise your hand if you learned this before you were six years old. And look at the amount of skills given in that poster. You learned all this in the first six years of your life. After that, you only enhanced those skills or learned how to do more with those skills. But the foundation of those skills you got in your first six years. And that is the importance of the first six years. And now for the first eight years in the foundational thing from brain development to school preparedness to improved learning outcomes, equality, justice, employability, everything, the prosperity of a country depends on what that country invests in the first eight years now. And that is going to be the most important takeaway from this national curriculum framework. So as you go through the national curriculum framework with your team, with your school, it's a 360 page document, but you don't have to get scared of the 360 pages. Uh, the beginning of the pages are more about the you know contents, etc. The last pages are more about the annexures required. Uh, but there's a lot of wealth in this NCF and that's what I'm going to take you through in my presentation. But with this NCF, I would also tell you to go through four more documents. One is Nipun. Nipun is National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading with Understanding and Numeracy. Nipun is a very important document because our goal is foundational literacy and numeracy. The second document that you should go through is Vidya Pravesh. Vidya Pravesh basically helps um, 
the pre-primary children or the early years children or the kindergarten children transit to grade one and two so these two documents extremely important the other two documents which i would urge you to go through are uh, guidelines for design and implementation of early learning programs which is by unicef it has some excellent examples of lesson plans etc and ncrt a few years back came out with the preschool curriculum this document is again a very essential document so please go through that also and the last two documents which i would like you to go through are experiential learning nai talim uh, by scrt chandigarh it talks about mahatma gandhi's um, take uh, in the nai talim about experiential learning and the second document is again by ncrt it's a bibliography on learning outcomes because most of the time schools don't know what are learning outcomes so these six documents plus the ncf a rainbow of seven colors is what you should be going through with your team glocal is something that this curriculum framework stands for i feel it has a excellent combination of uh, looking into our pioneers in education in india who were right from savitri bai phule to rabindranath tagore to mahatma gandhi swami vivekanand to krishna murthy biju bai badeka tara bai modak uh, you know and i think the early childhood in india was strengthened because of the visit of maria montessori but the most important person that whom we have to salute is giju bai badeka for setting up the first preschool in bhavnagar in 1916 much before independence and then of course the global thinkers and uh, theorists rousseau frobel dewey montessori uh, piaget bruner vygotsky uh, bronfenbrenner gardner all these are also part of the ncf so as you take your teachers through the ncf please ensure that they go through these pioneers and their work and uh, early childhood association has a lot of workshops that we do on all these theorists so please make it a point the panchakosh is the i think uh, something that wakes up our mind to the fact that as indians we follow too much of uh, global practices thinking that the world is ahead of us but the panchakosh and its inclusion in the ncf i think will give a grounding to everybody that india was always much ahead when it came to education and understanding of children and their development and that's why the panchakosh which is part of the taittiriya upanishad is very very important so look at the first aspect of the panchakosh it talks about physical development or the anamaya kosh where uh, or the pra- pranamaya kosh where we talk about body awareness how body is involved in learning how sensorial learning is a very important part then you have the emotional spiritual uh, and the ethical development so socio emotional ethical development covered in the manomaya kosh and then you have the development of the intellect which we are very fond of intelligence cognition uh, which is part of the vijnana maya kosh uh, and also the ananda maya kosh which talks about the aesthetic and cultural development so i prefer you know we go gaga over multiple intelligence theory but it's ingrained in our culture the pancha kosh was always there with us and it's time for us to embrace it another important element that you should go through when you are going through the ncf is the fact that it focuses on the inner to the outer which means internal and external that uh, you not only have to work on the external habits of a child uh, everything will come from internal so the term intrinsic and extrinsic becomes very important so whether it's self learning which becomes intrinsic learning or self discipline which is again intrinsic uh, the ncf covers this very well in their uh, uh, the you know five areas of vikas so you have the sharirik vikas the pranik vikas the mansik vikas the baudhik vikas and the chaitsik vikas so you have physical development development of life energy 
which is missing in many curriculums you know the balance of your energy your enthusiasm your smooth functioning of all your systems so we talk about five senses you know we talk about sensorial learning there are eight senses please go through that and those eight senses are what talk about the pranic vikas and then you have your emotional and mental development mansik vikas you have your baudhik vikas which is your intellectual development which is not only about remembering it's about observation experimentation analytic it talks about abstract and divergent thinking so you see uh, spiritual development is also taken care of it's uh, chaitsik vikas happiness love compassion spontaneity freedom aesthetic sense all this is very spiritual so when we talk about the national curriculum framework whether for the foundational years this foundational years framework is setting the stage for what we should know as educators go through it from the point of view of you may already have a curriculum go through it does my curriculum have these elements because this is what is telling the us that education now is about holistic development and it's not just focused on any one skill or area aims curriculum goals competencies and learning outcomes this is the flow that they have given about curriculum planning so if you go to page 85 onwards it talks about the major components of a teaching plan so when you are going through how does your school teach the children this is a very important element in the ncf because it talks about of course it talks about competencies and learning outcomes but it also talks about teacher directed teacher guided and child led activities we need a balance of that otherwise most of our schools have only teacher guided teacher directed activities if you're talking about intrinsic learning we need child led activities uh, how much should be a duration of every session what should be the sequence of learning what should be the sequence or the timetable of your day it's all given in the ncf uh, the content and the material to be used in activities classroom arrangements like seating display etc uh, specific strategies you know rather than always being chalk talk and uh, blackboard activities or smart board activities specific strategies that teachers can use for children and most importantly methods of assessment so i think this slide kind of tells us all this is part of foundational learning and all this is where the ncf hand holds you to ensure that you do the best in your school lesson planning you know we talk so well about lesson planning that yes 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 we plan lessons uh, but it sometimes become a burden for teachers because teachers feel i am doing a good job now why do you want me to document it uh I love the concept of panchari in the national curriculum framework and that's what's there on the screen right now. Uh, all the visuals and illustrations that I have used are part of the NCF uh, document so you will definitely get them there. But the panchari concept of five step learning is so easy for teachers to implement, you know. It has aditi that means the introduction as the first step. then it has both both means conceptual understanding this is where children will try to understand the core concepts through play inquiry project whatever you plan for them then you have abhyas abhyas means practice practice means you may give them an activity or a game uh, a range of interesting activities that you give them then you have prayog prayog means application application is about uh, uh, how can i connect what i have learned to what i am doing and then you have prasar prasar means expansion and it's all about um, uh, telling others about what you have learned sharing with others the skills that you have learned so if you make your lesson planning in this a way you are actually covering entire concept of or the entire circle of learning for a child's brain so ensure that whatever planning is done is done with aditi bodh abhyas prayog and prasar very important and it's so brilliantly explained that how you go from the start of your activity or lesson to the end result which is about children talking about their learning excellent
One of the most important aspects which I loved about this NCF and which all of you should actually go and check your classrooms for is it talks about on page 38, it talks about how children learn the furniture layout and it says three words that this is how children learn choice, wonder and joy. And I think that kind of tells you everything that you need to know about whether your school is a great place of learning, whether children will enjoy the lessons in your classroom, whether you should choose this toy, whether you should choose this app. Look at it from three words, choice, wonder and joy. When it talks about classroom layout, what I've written on the left becomes very important that learning at this stage is active and interactive process. They not only learn through play, they want to interact with other children. So if you are still going to have those table and desks, you know, those front facing table, desk, table, desk, table, desk. Oh my God, please don't read the NCF because then it's not meant for you. What you need is round tables where children can socialize, be with each other because of neuroscience the says that the brain is social. So when you put them in this compartmentalized uh, seating arrangement, the socialness of the brain suffers and then it can't learn. And this is what is very importantly given in the NCF. And that's why I, I give this NCF good marks because it's not only about curriculum planning. It, it connects theory to practice to everything. So it's very, very important to understand what I've put on the right also. The children like to do the following. Do you provide opportunities for it? Children will like to kick, run, play, tear, jump. Uh, is your classroom meant for these things? And is your timetable taking care of these things? Which means are you cooping up the children full day in the classroom? Or are you also taking them outside to another room, to an outdoor space? So this particular slide uh, and this particular page, I think you should keep in mind if you're building a new school or if you already have a school, then look into it from the point of view of children's learning. You will be training your teachers with or without the NCF. But now with the NCF, of course, you need to train your teachers and it takes care of it brilliantly on page number 91. It talks about how teachers can support children to learn better. How can you make your classroom practices with teaching strategies? Not just Bene puppet show dikhaya, maine flashcard dikhaya, ne aapki strategy kya hai? How much time are you giving for the children to talk? What kind of questions are you asking? So if you see on the left, listening, modeling, solving problems, questioning, provoking, researching, and making children independent are strategies that teachers have to use. So which means you will have to focus now on ensuring that your teachers not only know the what and the how, but they should be able to know the why. And I think one of the most important parts of this NCF is the why. A lot of people say 360 pages, but I think 360 pages was because the NCF did not only want to tell you the what and the how, it wanted to tell you the why, the reason behind, the research behind everything that is given in the NCF. A lot of pages in the NCF are about learning through play. And what they have said is play is not just about playing. Play is about conversations, play is about stories, play is about toys, play is about music, play is about art and play is about craft. So that's what they say when they say play. And it's very, very important for you to have a look at this slide that uh, Gijubai Badeka was actually the one who came out with this entire story pedagogy. He taught through stories. He said children remember things better through stories. And if you see this slide, that's what it says, that these are the skills connected to the brain that a story develops in children. It develops focus and self-control. It develops perspective taking, communication, cognitive flexibility. Now look at what I have given you in this slide. Focus and self-control. When you retell a story, change a few facts and see where the children remember and they tell you, no, no, you told us this last time. No, she wasn't wearing this color. Focus and self-control. Perspective taking. 
one of the most important ways in which children learn about emotional development and understanding empathy is through stories because they become a part of every character in the story they are able to take the place of every character think like that character communication of course your language improves when you are telling stories and uh, cognitive flexibility sometimes uh, when you say okay i'm going to continue this story later or i have to move from one scene in the story to another scene you are developing cognitive flexibility so don't just look at stories as entertainment stories are not just entertainment that's what this ncf talks about so when you are planning when you are discussing after this please focus on story pedagogy very very important one of the other aspects about learning through play is the toy pedagogy this uh, this ncf talks a lot about the toy pedagogy and i've done my research and as you can see on the left hand side the poster every state of our country has different toys some of them are made of wool some of them are made of wood some of them are made of shells some of them are made of all different materials but what do we do in our classrooms we have plastic toys everything is plastic so all your role play corners has plastic maximum we will have is cloth because of the puppets and wood because of the blocks but think about it if you give me a wooden kitchen set and then you give me a steel kitchen set and then you give me a plastic kitchen set not only am i feeling different materials but my hold is also different for all these materials my steel kitchen set will require a finer grip my wooden kitchen set will require a bigger grip so when you giving me toys made of shells i learn to be a little more careful with them because when i told my teachers also that we are going to include toys of different materials they said wow ma'am teachers ch children will break them uh, ma'am aap mud ke toys de honge the ch children will break them i said no always remember montessori whenever you think the children are going to break something she said children learn by imitation so the way you handle the material children will watch you and handle the material like that when you are handling that material talk to the children this is slightly delicate so we will have to be careful but don't away take away from children the fact that india is a rich country when it comes to our heritage of toys think about it tribal children also play with those toys they don't break them so then why are why would your children break them so please make use of the toy pedagogy that our country is known for i enjoyed the pages on art and craft in the ncf because it says art and craft is not just about pachak activities you know the pachak activities pachak activities i call where you take the palm of the child you paint it and then you make them do pachak on a piece of paper and then you send them to wash their hands and on that hand print you then draw a face and feet and say ye duck ho gaya that's called a pachak activity which is so bad for children because children did nothing in it children did not create anything in it the teacher did it this ncf talks about that it says please don't do art and craft activities like that and when we talk about art and craft it talks about drawing painting pasting play modeling tearing cutting folding constructing your school displays should be rich with all different kinds of art and craft not just paper liya sticking kiya coloring kiya painting kiya no have different and also make it that you know if if you are doing an art activity give children different material and let them choose what they want to so that each child's activity looks unique otherwise aap classroom dekho 40 log 40 bachcho ke lagaye honge all 40 look the same no we don't want that kind of factory nonsense it's very very important and here i would say if you have read our book once upon a gift it was frobel who included this in the schools and he called them occupations so i'm so happy to see this frobel occupations as part of the ncf please change the way you do art and craft in your schools as you know nipun is a very important document and our goal of the nep is foundational literacy and numeracy 
and uh, what i enjoyed there is there is a section called foundational literacy but i enjoyed the section on foundational numeracy because i think numeracy is very weak in our country we we have a lot of things for phonics and this and that but numeracy we are not going from concrete to pictorial to abstract look at the right side of my screen we go straight to abstract we start doing worksheet at activities with children and that is why i loved pages 117 to 122 which talk about foundational literacy and this what i have put on the slide is what i loved they talk about the elps concept for numeracy where e stands for experience l stands for spoken language p stands for pictures and then s stands for written symbols so which means when you're teaching children about numbers first let them experience concrete objects for counting let them experience the spoken language of 1 2 3 so this is where your songs you know uh, will help uh, that you sing with children uh, but be careful when you are singing number songs first choose forward counting songs before teaching them backward counting songs so what's the difference forward counting songs are 1 2 3 4 5 once i caught a fish alive 3 5 6 7 8 9 10 that way backward counting saw sounds are five little ducks went out one day uh, mama duck said quack 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 and four little ducks came back 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 so this is backward counting till children have not learned forward counting please don't do backward counting and then of course pictures and then comes writing of numbers so i'm so happy that foundational numeracy is also now that knowledge is being given to teachers how to do it in a scientific Another very important aspect of the NCF is page 123 to 130 which talks about children's behavior. I mean I mean look at it an NCF is also training teachers on how to handle children's behavior, how to understand children's behavior. There is not always one reason for a child's behavior. There can be multiple reasons which you have never even thought of. And it talks about that there are four kinds of behavior that you would notice in children one is aggressive behavior one is anti social behavior one is disruptive behavior and one is inappropriate expression so which means they cry or they scream or they shout and what teachers are taught taught in this ncf is focus on your voice focus on your words focus on your body language and focus on your attitude i mean it's it's a document that is a kind of a a course in teacher training wonderful pages 144 to 149 focus on something which is very interesting which is ways of organizing content you know you heard the word inquiry method or the project based method it gives you a different approaches that you can use when you are teaching children like project based approach or story based approach theme based approach or eclectic approach and you must also read up on rabindranath tagore because he also had come out with three different methods of teaching so i'm very happy to see that india was always doing a lot of things that now the world is talking about and it's time for us indians to understand that global is the right way to go forward